So we've been talking about collisions, um, and there's also these things that we call explosions with collisions. And really, what I like the way that I like to think about this is it's kind of like a reverse inelastic collision because the things are together to start with and then they break apart afterward. So the initial velocity um, for both parts together in the beginning is the same and then they have different final velocities. Um, reverse inelastic collision. That's the way that I think about these. Um, now this example right here we have an initial velocity. Sometimes we'll talk about like I don't know, a cannon firing a cannonball or something like that. And at first they'll be at rest. And then when the cannonball shoots forward, the cannon will recoil. So they'll kind of break apart like that. Um, but here in this example, we actually do have an initial velocity. So we have one dimensional explosion. This figure shows a space hauler and cargo module of total mass big M traveling along an X axis in deep space. They have an initial velocity V initial of magnitude 2100 kilometers per hour. So our V initial equals 2100 kilometers per hour relative to the sun. With a small explosion, the hauler, the hauler, that sounds weird for some reason, um, ejects the car cargo module of mass 0.2 m. So we're going to say mass of the module equals 0.2 m, which means that the mass of the hauler has to be 0.8 m. The hauler then travels 500 kilometers per hour faster than the module along the x-axis. That is, the relative speed v rel between the hauler and the module is 500 kilometers per hour. What then is the velocity vhs of the hauler relative to the sun? So we kind of want to know the final velocity of the hauler, right? The final velocity of the hauler is going to be the velocity of the hauler relative to the sun. That's what we want to know. Um, now, in order to do this, we have to find the final velocity of the module um, in terms of that final velocity of the hauler. And what I mean by that is they give us a relative velocity, right? Now, we know with relative motion, um, if I know that the velocity of the hauler relative to the sun, I know that I'm going to find that. So I'm going to find relative velocity kind of in terms of these little subscripts as well. So if I want to use my subscripts, this will be velocity of the hauler relative to the module plus the velocity of the module relative to the sun, right? Now here, we know that the velocity of the hauler relative to the module is that 500 kilograms, be, sorry, 500 kilometers per hour, because it says that the relative speed between the hauler and the module is 500 kilometers per hour, and the hauler is tra traveling 500 kilometers per hour faster. So that's going to be a positive 500 kilometers per hour. So VHS, VHS is equal to 500 kilometers per hour plus Vms. Now this right here, velocity of the module relative to the sun, that's going to be our final velocity of the module. Okay, so if I solve this for that final velocity of the module, we get final velocity of the module equals velocity of the hauler relative to the sun minus 500. And that makes sense, right? Because it's going 500 kilometers per hour slower than the hauler. So now we can use our um, conservation of momentum. So we get momentum initial equals momentum final. Momentum initial, they're stuck together, right? So it's just one unit. It's big M times initial velocity. And then momentum final, we have the mass of the hauler times the final velocity of the hauler plus the mass of the module times the final velocity of the module. So we know that the mass of the hauler and the mass of the module are in terms of big M. So big M is actually going to cancel out. So that helps us. We know the initial velocity of the system. And we also know the final velocity of the hauler and the final velocity of the module in terms of the final velocity of the hauler relative to the sun, which is what we want to find. So now we can start plugging our numbers in. So we get M, big M, times initial velocity, which was 2,100 kilometers per hour.
equals mass of the hauler, which was 0.8 big M, times final velocity of the hauler, which of course is just the velocity of the hauler relative to the sun, which is what we're trying to find, plus uh, mass of the module, which is 0.2 times big M, and then times the quantity or times um, the final velocity of the module, which we found right here is going to be the final velocity of the hauler relative to the sun minus 500. And that's of course kilometers per hour as well. Now you'll notice that I didn't use meters per second for my unit for uh, velocity and that's totally fine. Um, because all of my velocities are in kilometers per hour, I'm gonna get my answer in kilometers per hour as well. So big M cancels out because all of the masses are in terms of big M. And we end up getting 2100 kilometers per hour is equal to 0.8 VHS plus 0.2 VHS minus 0.2 times 500. I'm just distributing that 0.2 to both of those terms. Minus 100. Uh, kilometers per hour. And then here I'm going to add 100 to both sides and add 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2, which is just one. And so I end up getting that the velocity of the hauler relative to the sun is 2200 kilometers per hour.